What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So I know we're only a couple days away from Zer, but we finally got the melted heart of the Salije. Um, and I'm very, very excited to bring you the Immortal Sork. I know there's a few people that have been bringing this around, and I have just been just filled with excitement. I've been doing Durial. We've been farming Durial like crazy. You can see right above me how many Durial runs I've been doing. And I have finally got the melted heart, which is freaking awesome so we are going to just showcase the immortal sork build i know you guys have probably seen this somewhere else but i wanted to bring it to you because i've been basically a sork main for this entire season as well as the previous season i play sork more than anything so i think i'm just kind of a sork main so i kind of want to go over the build the skills the the paragon board the gear the vampiric powers all that good stuff and just give you a brief rundown now i'm not going to go into too much detail because the build speaks for itself and a lot of it is the same as my previous one or two ball lightning builds so i'm just going to break down a lot of the changes that i made and just showcase how the undying effect really works and like why you want to be as injured as possible the entire time so i'm kind of just hanging out here let me just see uh, let me just see let me see if i can just like go over this while these guys are just attacking me so what you have here is we are going firebolt again into enhanced firebolt for the two points just um to get down to our core skills and again this is going to be our enchantment because we're going to be dealing fire damage okay now we're going to go down and we're not taking any core skill damage whatsoever or core skills all we're going to be doing is maxing them out or maxing them out maxing out our mana we want to have as much mana as possible as well as deal as much damage as we can because this build it is going to be a little tanky so we we sacrifice a little bit of damage to basically be immortal so with this we're going to have more damage when we cast above 50 mana now we're going to come down to our defensive skills and we're rocking almost all of them we're going to have flame shield for extra movement speed and mana cost reduction as well as teleport into more damage reduction with shimmering we're going to have one point elemental attunement to reset our defenses which is really good and then we're going to have ice armor for even more mana regeneration we want to have as much mana regeneration as we possibly can in this build that is the core essential mechanic that's going to keep us alive the entire time now we're going to come down to conjuration we are going to have ice blades the only reason that we're rocking ice blades is to get the times four um talrashes for cold damage and then we're maxing out align the elements as well as protection and mana uh, shield just for as much damage reduction and barrier as possible now we're going to come down and we're going to take inner flames as well as devouring blaze for even more crit strike damage and then we're taking static discharge for crackling energy as well as invigorating just to help keep our mana basically full the entire time and then of course ball lightning down into wizard's ball lightning for even more damage okay next of course we're going to take our unstable uh currents to just uh proc all of our uh, shock skills then we're taking one in coursing as well as maxing conduction as well as electrocution for even more damage reduction and movement speed because ball lightning scales for movement speed and then our last little key passive is fiery surge when we kill a burned enemy we're going to be able to have mana and in regeneration increased by 45 percent which because of firebolt being in our um enchantment slots everything is going to always be burning and then our second enchantment slot is going to be chain lightning which when it forms after spending 100 mana we are going to be able to shoot off a chain lightning which with our gear we're going to be able to have maximum mana so and then of course our very last one is going to be veer's mastery now i've still been testing this and i believe that we're still getting the damage but we're still not getting the damage reduction aspect of it i really hope that this gets fixed by the time um Zer comes out just here in a couple days but if it doesn't that's still okay because we have we're rocking the veer's gear piece and we're still going to have incredible damage reduction so after our skills we're going to go over as you guys can see we're just getting whacked by these dudes um let's go over the gear and talk about some gear pieces that you can swap out and just the main thing so pretty much all of the gear pieces are the same what we did do is we swapped out remnants as well as to vaults because we do not need this okay we don't need this at all and then of course we swapped out our amulet of disobedience which we no longer need um however we did put it in other places now you do not have to have a shako here it does help but you do not need it you could run a normal helmet just like this one which is perfectly fine or you could run um um was it god slayer you could run god slayer helmet perfectly fine 
Um, now, the reason that we swapped out remnants as well as the bolts is because we want as much damage reduction and total armor as possible. As you can see on this chest piece, we got total armor and then we got three DRs. This is perfect as well as rocking a Veer's Mastery. It's going to grant us an insane amount of damage reduction because of the key passive. So once it's actually fixed, we're going to have so much damage reduction, we're going to be even more unkillable. So that's the main swap there. And then, of course, in our... Um, pants we're rocking disobedience again it's not going to be um as good as it is in the amulet but we swapped this out again because of the total armor as well as the dr but more importantly on our pants as well as our gloves the main things that we swap or excuse me our pants as well as our boots the main thing that we swapped here as you can see is the damage reduction while injured this is very very important this is a stat that doesn't really get used except for in a build like this okay while you're injured which is what what you can see here and as you can see all this red around my screen that means i am injured so i'm getting the extra 30 percent damage reduction from my boots which could be higher up to 43 and then the same thing on my pants i'm getting 35.7 percent more damage reduction uh while being injured which is why you want to have as as low a life as possible okay outside of that all of our gear pieces are relatively the same as well as storm swell and conceited and then we're rock and tell rashas and then we have recharging here so when chain lightning bounces we're going to gain mana back which is the reason why we have ultimate mana and then of course melted heart which is the key item to this piece okay so a few options here that you can kind of swap out um or what you could do is i want to kind of just showcase how much mana regen that we have so the reason that this works so well is because with melted heart it's going to serve as a shield essentially and when our resource gets re reduced then we're going to start taking life so our mana regeneration is 20 percent right now right so then when we go to attack we're going to go into um the training grounds but i do want to show you see how it goes up to 22 and then we just kill everything now i want to show something that kind of happens here inside because there's one gear piece that is very very good and that is concentration concentration is a very very strong gear piece which you can swap out um it's super good let me find it not recharging uh not prodigies it's got to be yeah right here it's got to be not recharging where are you nope uh concentration here we go so concentration is going to give us up to another 50% mana regen re re or excuse me mana regeneration when we haven't take damage in the last um, two seconds. However, what's weird about this is that it double dips. As you guys have seen that when I attack, my mana regeneration goes to uh, 22. So then again, our base is going to be at 17. It jumps immediately to 38. So our normal base was 20, and that was without attacking. And this right here is giving me double dipping because 50% from 20 would only be 35 or no from 20 it would only be 30 so it's oh, it's giving me basically double so then when i attack let me find some monsters here and you guys can see that it's going to jump if i can find some monsters here let me find some monsters and you guys will see that it just it just it just jumps let me pull it back up watch the mana regen see how it jumps to 43 it jumps to 91 right it jumps to 91 which is absolutely insane right and then it's going to go even higher it can go even higher here because of our key passive so you can see that as much mana regen that i have on 193 mana and then remember we're getting the extra 45 percent when we kill a burning enemy so our mana regen is so high that not only can we just spam ball lightning but we will just never die because our mana is always going to be full so this is a strong option the, these are the two that i would go with and then when you fight bosses or something like that or if you know you need to do like lilith or do a world boss or something like that and then you swap in tal rashas for it now the stat priorities on here obviously aren't good i'm still trying to find another ring to swap it in but this is the power that you want to swap in for it so that's all the gear piece changes guys as far as the um vampiric powers they are the exact same here which Prey on the Weak is actually bugged right now because of the 16% damage to vulnerable enemies. I don't know why. It's just bugged. Shout out to Woody for finding that out. But it is bugged. Now, however, the big change is resilience. You gain even more damage reduction for each 2% of your life missing. So the more life that you have, 
the more damage reduction that you're getting while your life is depleted, which is another reason why you want to have as low life as possible when you're going to fight and use this build. It's really, really easy. All you do is take Melted Heart off. You just take it off and then you let them hit you, get down, put it on, and then you can go do your stuff. And you can basically stay this way. Just don't hit Q and hit a um, potion whatsoever. So after that, guys, I'm going to go into the Paragon board because it has changed a bit. I'm going to leave a link down to this to the Mobilitics um, build guide and just kind of break everything down. But we're using Adept for, of course, for our mastery skills, which seems to be even having the additional bonus fixed. We got Destruction for more crit damage, of course. Elementalist, which is huge here. We're always going to hit all three elements. Then we have Territorial for damage up close because we're Ball Lightning. Then we got Warding, which... We take reduced damage for each for the less mana we have up to 25%. This is actually a really, really good one we have here. Um, however, with willpower, you could probably swap that out to a dex node if you really wanted to, like tactician for even more DR or reinforce for even more DR. That, that actually might be really, really good um, for swapping warding out because your mana is always going to just be so full. So if you swap this out right for reinforce, you're going to do even more damage, more all resist, and then you're going to have a barrier for damage reduction. And it's just as good. So both of them are super strong. Then, of course, we have Unleashed for even more mana regen after spending 50, which is really easy in this build. So the link of it is going to be down in the description below. I am super, super happy with this build. I do want to just note that, like, although this build is super fun and it just seems like you can just walk through a T100 no problem without like worrying about dying unless it's an oddball explosion or something like that i wouldn't worry about it too much the build is absolutely insane and super fun however the devs did state that they um nerfed it so let me go over and show the nerf that they uh they tweeted about um adam tweeted about let me go over to twitter and i'll show you guys uh the nerf so adam tweeted out if we can find it adam tweeted out right here um, on the first, a few quick notes prior to the 1.2.3 update, which really sucks. On Tuesday, this is right before the server um, gets updated for Xur. Okay, so the Melted Heart will no longer count as the player spending resources when resources drained from damage taken in PvP zones. We are doing this because of an interaction that causes some performance issues for players. Per earlier commitments, we will make their best efforts to not nerf, which let me just say real quick, it's not for a full separate video, but let me just say, I really love that the devs left the season alone and did not nerf a whole lot. So shout out to the devs for there. Um, obviously bugs and stuff like that definitely fixed but like as far as like nerfing or like seeing how strong hoda is let us have fun with it for the season nerf it the next season that way we already know it's coming no big deal um and they're applying this as a as it is impacting or impacting player game performance in the pvp zone so for season three this will be fixed for all areas outside of P pvp as well so what this means is is that the melted heart is going to be working differently than it is right now so if you are going to play this build definitely just go have fun with it right now so if you guys don't kind of understand what what the change that they're doing is so the melted heart will no longer count as the player spending resources when resource is drained so if you guys come back to this right it says you gain max resource but in addition when you take damage you drain three resource for every one percent of life you would have lost instead so in the pvp zone what this is basically saying is is that it will no longer count as the player spending resource right so it's we're the damage and how the ability is going to affect your hp is just going to work differently so it's going to be a, basically nerfed okay so it's a big bummer there um but separately okay so that's it so i wanted to show you guys the quick nerf on that but for the remainder of the season guys a month and a half right just enjoy it have fun with the bill if you want to be undying this also counts for undying necromancers and barbarians or any other builds druids etc that want to make use of the melted heart i really hope that they make a change and just kind of balance it a little bit but i still think the melted heart is going to be good outside of that if it wasn't causing any performance issues then i think we would be fine okay so that is the build guys um i just want to like pop into a 100 really quick just to do i even have a 100 yes i do okay let me just pop in here just so you guys can kind of see how awesome the build is even in a 100 because i know a lot of you guys especially on my build guides and stuff like that um that we do even just showcasing the builds like they want to see it in a t100 so we're just going to showcase it very very quickly in a t100 because it is pretty 
gnarly. You can see our life is already down. We're not going to hit Q. And you, you still go through your rotation just like normal. You know what I mean? You just go through your rotation, right? You can just sit on these guys and just tank the damage. This is just shadow damage or poison damage. And you just, you're just you just fine, right? Let me go in here and just like, like let these guys beat on me. We just got to not let the shadow damage kill us. But look at this. You just like you can just like take hits. You don't want the shadow damage to kill you because that can kill you. But outside of that, man, like the build is just amazing. You can just tank everything. The dot damage over time obviously is going to be an issue. But again, the build is super, super tanky, right? It's super tanky. It still acts like ball lightning. You're just gonna like you're gonna lose a little bit of damage. You're sacrificing a little bit of damage to be able to play the build and just be like undying. So as long as there's not like dot damage, shadow, poison, etc. over time, you basically can just sit in it. You see the poison just kind of like take over, then you regain it back. No issues whatsoever playing. You can just eat everything. And then you just go through your rotation like normal. You can see our regen is absolutely insane. I'm going to bring it up one more time as you guys can see. Our mana regen is going to be through the roof. Right? Mana regen is 47 right now still 47 then we kill all the enemies it goes up to 47 we can get it up to 90 right as we're popping through there goes 73 i think the highest that i got my mana regen is 98 so when you have 98 mana regen per second and, a, and 139 mana or 93 mana you just can't die and furthermore if you wanted to go in and use an elixir that gives you even more um, resource generation. I don't have it on my person. I have it in my stash, but there's the resource one where you can increase your regen and all that stuff, or you could even use resourcefulness and increase your, um, you know, all your stuff. Super easy. You just don't even worry about things, man. You just don't even worry about it. But yeah, guys, that's the build. Enjoy the build right now. I'm gonna have to switch off this uh, for Zer. Obviously, which we're going to have another video that will come out tomorrow on the 4th for you guys, my updated guide um, for Xur. So, yeah, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.